So in today's session, uh, we will see an example of how to update the values using Rangekuta and Euler's method. In the last two sessions, I had told you about the algorithm and now we will take a practical uh, example. So we will take up the same example which we uh, did uh, for the step-by-step -step method. So it's the same uh, 20 MBA uh, 50 Hertz generator is delivering eight, 18 megawatts, H is 2.52 and uh, the reactance is 0.35 and it's uh, supplying through uh, to the infinite bus through a double circuit line and the internal voltage of the generator is 1.1 per unit and the infinite bus voltage is one per unit. Okay, and now a short circuit occurs at the middle of one of the lines. And you find out the response when uh, it is cleared using 2.5 cycles and 6.5 cycles. So we saw this example, how to solve it using the step-by-step -step algorithm. Now we will see how we solve it. That is the computations involved using the Runge Kuta method. Okay. Now we have already, I have explained this to you. This will anyway see M is H by pi F. So it is 0 0.016 seconds square per uh, electrical radian. And pre-fault, I have two lines of 0.2 per unit reactance in parallel. Uh, and the generator reactance of 0.35. So X1 is 0.45 and PE1 is 2.44 sine delta. Okay, so P max before the fault is 2.44. And uh, the power transfer is 18 megawatts, that is 0.9 per unit. And this is also equal to the mechanical power. And during the fault, P max is 1.1 into 1 by 1.25. This 1.25 is the reactance when you shot the middle of one of the lines. So basically you get a delta and you have to find out the transfer impedance of delta. So it works out to uh, 0.88. And so the expression for PE is 0.88 sine delta. And I need to calculate the initial values of delta naught and omega naught. So initial power is 0.9. We have already seen it. And PE is 2.44 sine delta. So I equate it to 0.9 and I get delta naught is 0.378 radians. And initial omega naught is zero. Okay. Omega naught is zero because omega naught is the change in angle, d delta by d. So don't ever mistake that omega naught zero means the generator is stationary. No, all that it means is it's running at a constant speed, which means that delta is a constant, okay? And then post fault, one of the lines is cleared. So the line reactance is 0.2, one line is removed. So I have only 0.2 and plus 0.35 is 0.55, so I get P max is two and P3 is two sine delta. So these are the calculations. We have already seen it, and this is what I'll be using. This initial values I will be using for both Runge Kuta and Euler's method. So fine, let us see how I start off the Runge Kuta method for calculation. So I have here, I've just put the values again, omega naught, delta naught, M, delta T, again I take 0 0.05 seconds, you're free to choose whatever value you want. You can choose a smaller value. And delta P by M is 3.125. Now we will see what are the equations. We have already seen it. I'm again putting the equations for your reference. So in Runge Kuta method, I calculate eight coefficients in the fourth order. K1, K2, K3, K4, H1, H2, H3, H4. So K1 is omega naught delta T equal to zero. If you have any confusion, please uh, uh, view my video on Runge Kuta method. And so it is zero because omega naught is zero. And H1 is PM minus P max sine delta naught by M into delta T. And uh, I'm starting off with the fault, assuming the fault occurs at T equal to zero. So P max is 0.88. So I get 1.797. This is H1, okay? So here we are not doing that averaging of PA and all that like we did in step-by-step -step method. Okay, so at time t equal to zero, the fault occurs. So I'm using the faulted Pmax, that is 0.88. Next, 
K2 is omega naught plus H1 by 2 delta T. Omega naught is zero. H1 is 1.797 by 2. I get K2 is 0 0.045. And H2 is PM minus P max sine delta naught plus K1 by 2. K1 is zero. So this will again work out to be 1.797, right? So I hope you're paying attention how to calculate simple substitution. There is nothing. Once you know the formula, just substitute. Very easy to code also, very easy to code. K3 is omega naught plus H2 by two into delta T. H2 is 1.797, omega naught is zero. And H3 is PM minus P max sine delta naught plus K2 by two by M into delta T. So this works out to be 1.74. Then I calculate K4, which is omega naught plus H3 delta T. Just be careful, huh? here there is a divide by two here. It's just H3 and I have H4 PM minus P max sine delta naught plus K3 by M into delta T, okay? So now you have all the coefficients, K1, K2, K3, K4. H1, H2, H3, H4. So I'm ready now to update. So delta one is delta naught plus one by six plus K1 plus two K2 plus two K3 plus K4. Remember here, when you do, you have to use radians. If you think this is 0 0.0445 degrees, it's wrong, it's radians, okay? So delta naught also you, you do in radians, you get 0.4225 radians, which is 24.21 degrees. Similarly, I update omega 1, okay? I get 1.759 radians per second. So now I use these values again in the equations as omega naught, delta naught, and then calculate the updated values and so on and so forth, okay? So these are the values obtained at time of 0 0.05 seconds, and we use these values to compute the value at the next time interval. That is 0.1 seconds and continue. Now I'll show you the table. Just see this is the table for a fault cleared at 0 0.05 seconds. So you just see what all are there in the uh, table. This I have uh, shown it uh, for order uh, four, but I have just shown two of the uh, variables, K1, uh, uh, K2, and you just see a. Uh, P max is 0.88 at 0 0.05 and at 0 0.1 the fault is cleared, it becomes 2. Okay? And then you just continue, continue the same way. Now, uh, here it is cleared at 6.25 seconds. So you see that is 0.125 seconds. So at 0.1 I use P max is 0.88 and at 0.15 I use 2 because here in between the fault is cleared. This is the only thing you have to take care. I have shown only uh, two uh, coefficients because of lack of uh, distance. You can just continue doing it, right? So this is how it would look like, similar to what you saw in the step-by-step -step method, right? So you have to calculate the coefficients, eight coefficients and update. Calculate the eight coefficients, update. So the only thing you have to do is you have to be careful what value of Pmax you are using. Here you don't even have to bother whether the fault is before the inter in middle of the interval or at the beginning of the interval. You just continue using the correct value of P max. Same thing with modified Euler's method. I have the same values, initial values. So I calculate these are my equations. D delta by dt at uh, zero is d1 is zero, and uh, d omega by dt I use the initial value of delta which I get as 35.97 and delta P is delta naught plus D1 into delta T is 0.378 radians, the intermediate values and omega P is omega naught plus D2 into delta T, the intermediate value is 1.798 radians per second. And again, I calculate the derivatives. So here, D delta by dt at P is 1.798 and I calculate D omega by dt by P. So here I use the updated value of delta, okay? And I get 35.97. Using this, I calculate the new value of delta. Delta one is 
O2, three radians, and omega-1 is 1.798 radians per second. A slight difference from what you got in Runge-Kutta method, right? And again, the same thing, you have to continue. So now uh, we have seen three, three methods, the step-by-step -step method, the Runge-Kutta method, and the modified Euler's method for solution of the swing equation of a single machine in finite bus system. Please understand, all of them are approximate because they're all discrete. So we don't have closed form expressions. So don't ask me which is better, which is bad. All of them have approximations and uh, it just goes on the ease of computing. And if you see Range Kutta fourth order, the computation time is more because you have four, uh, eight coefficients, four plus four, eight coefficients to compute. And uh, the modified Euler's comparatively, there are lesser computations. And it all depends on the proper step size. If you use too small a step size, the computation time would be very high. If you use too large, it would be inaccurate. So there is always a trade. Okay. So you can make a comparison by looking at the uh, results I have presented for all the three methods. Thank you.